Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Yeah, you know, the uh, them birthdays, like, you know, like a, a lot of times I'll talk about them, but how important them birthdays are, you know, whether they're yours or mine doesn't make any difference because, you know, them candles, you know, in the beginning, they, uh, they, uh, they didn't mean nothing to me at all, you know. And then as time went on, why the candles represented an awful lot of struggle from a way of life and from places where I didn't believe I'd ever be able to get away from. And then it came into a, a world that uh, I couldn't describe how good that world is, you know, because of the fact that uh, the life that I get that I had been given, you know, and uh, here in Alcoholics Anonymous, why it was something really to know and something to talk about. Because the fact of Alcoholics Anonymous in the beginning for me, you know, was probably maybe similar, a little bit like yours, whoever you are, is that the main purpose of coming here was to stay sober. And to stay sober was the name of the game, and it was the name of the game, too, at that time, because I came here out of a hospital where I had to stay sober, where I wound up locked in a room and strapped down on a bed, you know, and so on. But through the years, I found out that it's, own, it's, it's not a question so much anymore, and hasn't been for many years, about staying sober. That's a primary thing that has to be there, because being drunk, of course, why then my mind act absolutely wouldn't be in this world at all again. But to live in a world that I want to live in, a world that's there, it's here for me each day. That's what this is all about. This is what it's all about as far as I'm concerned in Alcoholics Anonymous because of the fact of what it is. You know, for so long a time, and I mean this is a long time, uh, I was something similar to, to you, you know, in the way you were brought up and the way you lived. And, uh, I'm a little older and all that, but the life that I come from and what I did back, way back before I ever could be possibly be an alcoholic was that I took that with me through the years, and as I grew through the years, I used them excuses or them reasonings of why I was like I was in the day I was in. And I get here in Alcoholics Anonymous, and I don't know, and I and I have I have a way in my head that tells me that the blame is still out there. The blame meaning the reason I'm like I am is because of. Never once ever looking inside or never once ever considering that there's something inside of me that I put there, that I was the one that put it there. You didn't put it there. I don't care who you were either. And to know this, though, to talk about it, see, like an Alcoholics Anonymous, how many meetings are you going to go to or how, how many times are you going to hear this or are you going to hear this even? Because of the fact that it was so easy for me to blame my neighbor, my mother, my father, my brothers and sister, my brother especially even, and to use that in the day I was in to excuse my behavior or to cop out and say, I'm like I am because of that. Well, that's not true. There's a message here in Alcoholics Anonymous. And the message that I believe is the message is what's in print. It's already there. And it's about a way of life today. This isn't about tomorrow's life. This isn't about next year's life. This isn't about my yesterday's life either. You know, good or bad doesn't make any difference. Because of the fact of what it is. I come to Alcoholics Anonymous and I didn't realize and didn't know the exact reason to come to Alcoholics Anonymous. Why should I come here? Why should I keep coming here? I'm not drunk. I haven't drank in over 43 and a half years. I haven't had any whiskey in me in over 43 and a half years. That's a long time. But my mind, though, is what was hurt. See? And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't have an idea. I didn't have a clue. That my behavior, my behavior, looking at people, I talked about it today uh, with Frank here, and I talked about it today, that as I live my life today, I can look at you, I don't care who you are either, I don't give a darn which one you are, how long I've known you or anything else like that, and I have a mind that will talk to me, and it'll tell me things, and the things it tells me are always about today. 
Not yesterday, today. And these things that tells me about in the day I'm in makes my world that I live in a bad world, a ratty world, a world of hurts, a world of troubles, a world that there's conflict going on of some kind, some kind of a some kind of an anger, some kind of memory, some kind of a thing that'll stop me in the day I'm in. And I'm coming to Alcoholics Anonymous. I have never stopped coming to Alcoholics Anonymous. Why doesn't this go away? Why doesn't this here that's wrong with me, why why doesn't it disappear? I don't use it. Yes, I do use it. But I don't know I use it. I don't have a way of stopping me from using it because of the fact of who I am. I have a power in me, and this is what I'm going to have to start looking at, identifying, talking about, recognizing, becoming aware of it. Because you know how to take, take any one of you guys here today, check your track record today. Check your thoughts today. Any one of your thoughts today. Were they all good thoughts about kindness, about people, how nice they look, how well they're dressed? How they comb their hair so beautiful and everything else. Were they thoughts like that? Man, I can't produce thoughts like that. That's crazy, you know. But I can find out what's wrong with you. I can look at you and I'll pick you apart in a minute. And this is something that I won't, I won't recognize or I won't identify as the time I'm in is why my life is like it is. Why is my life sometimes so good and sometimes so bad? Why? I got sometimes I got just some, you know when my life is good a lot of times I've got no money in my pocket and a lot of times my life is bad and I got a lot of money in my pocket and try to figure that one out now you and I talked about this before <laughs> yeah. I've got a mind I've got a mind and I must look at it for what it is it's, and it's not a brain up here it's not about an eight or nine pound piece of material up there or anything like that. I've got something inside of here, and what this is in here is where I live. And some people call it soul, some people call it heart. I know the Sermon on the Mount calls it heart. Jesus Christ calls it heart. You take the issues of, you know, what's your heart? In other words, that's, that's your life, you know, out of, out of your, out of, the, out of your heart comes your life and so on. So, why, why can't I myself even right now, tonight, this night here, why can't I maintain or keep a way of thinking, acting, living today, this day, so that I don't have to go into an area where I have to criticize you, I have to judge you, I have to find out and look at you and see something wrong with you. And then when I see something wrong with you, I feel bad inside. And I do feel bad inside, too. Because I found a way here in Alcoholics Anonymous, and it's in step two, I found out in step two that, a, that I came to believe in a power that's greater than me to restore me to sanity. And sanity is find the soundness of mind. And soundness of mind is wholeness, wellness of mind, where a mind can think to good purpose, where a mind doesn't have to tear people apart or a mind that isn't fault-finding. I don't know how to stop fault-finding. By myself, I can't do that. Because I'll tell you this. All I'd have to do is just walk into any room or walk out of a room here, and I'll bet you I'll fall fine. In other words, I'll see something out there that's wrong. Maybe there's a chair in the way. Maybe the door is shut and it should be open or something. But I have a mind that talks to me that way. And if I don't learn what Alcoholics Anonymous is here for, and if I don't learn what alco alcoholism is, I'll go on living daily. And as I live daily... I find fault, and there's beautiful people around me, and I just find fault because they treated me wrong yesterday, and I hate their guts today for it. Now, that's a common story in AA. The closer an AA gets to another AA, the more damage he wants to inflict on that person, even if it's only a thought. This I can't live like that. I don't live like that. There's There's been so many people in my life in these years that I can say to you that I don't remember and I don't use and I don't think of these people in the day I'm in as a yesterday's happening or a yesterday's treatment. I don't. I can't. I'm not allowed to. Not because I say so, but because this here power that's in me tells me, shows me 
said, if I'm not the man I should be through his power, then they have to be me again. And I'm not going to be me. The reason why I'm talking like this is because there's a message here in Alcoholics Anonymous. And it's a very difficult message to hear because it's a hidden message. It's hidden because of the good works that I do. Or it's hidden because of maybe I think I'm doing something special and I'm doing more than you're doing, whoever you are. And I want to have credit and I want to be recognized. And this here makes me a little bit different from you. And yet here, in Alcoholics Anonymous, there's only 12 steps. And these 12 steps will fit any alcoholic with alcoholism. And if they fit any alcoholic with alcoholism, how come then some days I'm all right and some days I'm not? There must be something wrong with the picture. Why would I sit out there like you're sitting? And I sat there for two and a half years and I hated your guts, whoever you were. And I don't care who you were. I had two and a half years of being the same man sober as I was drunk. Never made a change. Never made an inch change. Not a change. And then when I started to try and I wanted to change, I didn't know how to do it. And the reason I didn't know how to do it because I didn't want to do what was required. I didn't want to believe in a power greater than me. I didn't want to make a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. I didn't want to get on my knees and pray. To another man's God, not mine. I didn't have one. I didn't want to do that. And I thought that all I had to do was just attend meetings like you're sitting there now. And then after you leave here, the mere fact that you spend an hour here or an hour and a half here is going to make your alcoholism go away. will give you the right to walk out that door out there and then start thinking rotten again of people. And I just got through talking to God and thinking God's going to forgive me when I can't even forgive them. This is a, this is a, this is Alcoholics Anonymous. This is steps I'm talking about. This is step three. And it talks in step three about me and only me. All by myself, in the light of my own circumstances, I have to develop the quality of willingness. When I acquire this willingness, I'm the only one that can exert myself, see. I'm the only one who can do it, in other words. Why not do it? Why not? I came here to do that, but I didn't know it. To come here to Alcoholics Anonymous and expect to sit here and then leave here and then have, have me be a different character. Character means the person I represent. I found out in Carl Gustav Jung's teachings, it has nothing to do with alcohol, alcoholism or anything, just people. He was one of the experts, and he talks in there about how the true man lies and lives only in the subconscious, not the conscious mind. That how in the, in the subconscious mind, the character, the real character I am, would rather do something I know how to do wrong rather than do something I don't know how to do right. Can you believe that? And I looked at that and looked at that, and I thought, my God, my whole life's been like that. I'd rather go out this day to day and do something that I know how to do and it's going to be wrong, but I don't care. Because to think to do something right would be that how am I going to find out how to do that right? I wouldn't know the difference because self doesn't know. And yet I'm built that way. And he's not even talking about an alcoholic. Here in Alcoholics Anonymous, we're given steps. All of us are, 12 of them. In these 12 steps, there's a method of living. This method of living that they're talking about, they're based on principles, spiritual in their nature. That's what it says right here. Alcoholics Anonymous 12 Steps are a group of principles, spiritual in their nature, which it practices the way of life will expel the obsession and drink and enable the sufferer to become happily and usefully whole. I want to become happily and usefully whole. I have been happily and usefully whole for a lot of years, many years. But that's only because the years went from day to day. And then they were years. In other words, if I don't have it now, this day, today, what good are all of them years? What good are they? Can I reach backwards now and grab a hold of a couple of days, a couple of months, a couple of years that were special, and then put them in today's life and then just do as I damn please today? It don't work that way. This is a way of life. And it talks about this on page 85 in the big book here that I'm not cured of alcoholism. What I really have is a daily reprieve. 
contingent on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. Every day is the day I must carry the vision of God's will into all of my activities. What's my activities? My activities are right now. Right now. Not five minutes from now, not when I leave the building, right now. Why can't I have exactly what I should have? The power of God. He can give me a daily reprieve. What's a daily reprieve? It means that this day today, I don't have to be with self. I don't have to be with a mind so ratty, so strong, that it'll recall things. If from the yesteryears even, recall. And I'll go through them again. And I'll get hurt again. And I'll think rotten again. And then I feel bad inside again. My disease of alcoholism isn't getting treated and I don't even know it. This is something serious to talk about. This is something with me. Lately, that's what I've been talking about. Today, I, I talked today at noontime uh, we're over at, uh, what is that, YMCA over there? And what am I talking about over there? Same thing I'm talking about here. It's about a way of life. It's about doing something today in my life. I'm not here for you. And that's not a selfish statement. That's a statement that I have to make because I came here for me. If I don't make it, man, I'm going to die. You're not going to die, but I'm going to die. I came here for me. And I used to think I was here because we're all here. Collectively, we are here. But individually, if I'm not living this life, how can I have it? How could I have it? Can I read this and do this? Man, I studied this book here, especially this, then this book here, the 12 by 12. And I studied and studied all night long, and I read all night long, and I never, never put it down all night long. The next day, you know what I did? I did the same thing I did the day before. I acted like a fool. I got mad. I turned on people. I drove my car like a maniac. I had everything going for me, and but it was all inside these covers. It wasn't inside these co this cover in here. And I couldn't tell the difference. I just couldn't tell the difference. I didn't know why. And the, and the important, most important part is I learned in Alcoholics Anonymous there was a man up in San Fernando. And this man in San Fernando talked about things that I didn't know anything about. He talked about a good life. He talked about the way he treated his wife. He talked about his kids. He talked about many, many things. And as he talked about these things, I listened to him. And I thought to myself, I don't talk like that. Why does he talk like that? He seems to be fine. No, no yeah, he comes through the door there. And he walks through and he's smiling, he's feeling good. I come through that door and I get so red-faced you can't even see me hardly. I just had an argument with a guy out there and we just had some trouble. And I'm sober. I'm not drunk. I, what's my excuse? Whatever I could find. But it's going to be in him. It's not going to be in me. He told me about a God. He told me about a God that he found in him for himself. Why don't you try him, he said. Whatever you got doesn't seem to be working. I didn't know step applications. Honest to God, I didn't know the beginning of steps at all. And here, Alcoholics Anonymous is all about 12 steps. This is a program of recovery. It's not a program of reading stories of drunkenness and, and harm and hurts. This is about a way of life. This is about a way of life today. Two things, a method of living and a power that makes the method possible. I know for sure. One alone by itself won't work. God by himself will not help me as an alcoholic with alcoholism. I found out he can't. He can't. And I found out also I have a sponsor that taught me steps. And I mean I know steps too. And this is going way, way back in the 50s. And by knowing steps, didn't change me either. Two separate things, always apart. Never once could I put two things together. I didn't know how to do it, and yet the steps say do it. Step two says, I came to believe in a power greater than me to restore me to sanity. Three says, I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him. Understood him from two, 
that he's the power that can restore me to sanity. Sanity is soundness of mind. Put the two things together, what are they? A method of living, meaning steps, and a power greater than me, meaning God. Put the two together. And the reason I'm saying down on one and two and three is because I believe that's the foundation. I believe without this knowledge that I'm talking about right now, you might get lost just the same way I got lost. I got lost in living. I got lost with money in pocket. New cars, new home, new boat, new motorcycles, new dune buggies, having fun. I got lost thinking everything is cool now. I got everything I need. Everything I need, I thought I, that's all I need now. My happiness is here. And my happiness wasn't there. Because I was the same man, doing the same thing. There came a time that I started living with a power at work, and then I took him everywhere else. And I started talking to this power, which was a God. It became a God of my life. First it was a God of another man's life, another alcoholic's life. And then it became a part of my life. And the way it was is that I talked to this power. I associated my life to him as I lived my life in the day I'm in at work. I actually, actually talked to him the way I would talk to me. And I would see things. Only by his part, by his power, asking him, is this the right way? Is that the right way? Should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? I'm sorry, I left you. I'm back. It was an ongoing conversation. Instead of with me, with God. Another man's God. Now that might not mean nothing to you guys. Some of you guys, I know darn well, you, you are born and raised with a God. I know that. I, I've heard it so many times. I never was. I never was in church. I don't know who God is. I don't know how to pray to him. I don't even know what to call him. And yet, though, here in Alcoholics Anonymous, if this isn't brought out and talked about, you might do what I did. You might go out that door out there and think you're all right because you just get off your knees in here, and then you prayed to him and then walked out there. And I used to hold meetings, a lot of meetings in churches. And I'd go up to the altar, and I'd do the third step prayer at the altar. After I left the altar, I would go out in the world I'm in, right down here in Colorado, in Denver, Colorado. I did this here for seven years. And then when I did that, I thought what I did was necessary to change me, and then I could go out in the world and I would be somebody now I should be, instead of who I am. And it never happened. It just didn't happen. All of a sudden, here I come to me. All of a sudden, there's me showing up again. All of a sudden, here's all my yesterdays again, all of my anger, memory, brothers, everybody, anybody. It made no difference. I don't want to live like that. I don't have to live like that. There is a method here in Alcoholics Anonymous, and this method I'm talking about is what I'm speaking of right now. This is a way of life with a power behind it, meaning God, and a method meaning the 12-step application for today's life as I live today's life, and only because it is today. That's all. I can't do this for the future. I can't build this and store it and lock it up and then draw from it. I have to have it in me now, right now, before this meeting started even. I always talk to God. I talk, to, I talk two ways. Well, let's leave the first off because I don't want to say the word. But the second is that I talk to God. And I ask God to guide us all, direct us all, power us all, according to his will. Your words, Lord, not my words. Is there something here that you can see that each one of us need to have? Would you be with us? Would you help us? God is in this room whether you want him in here or not. Because you can't kick him out. I just got through praying to him, and he's the God of my life. Wherever my life goes, God's goes. Used to be wherever I went, I went. That isn't true. This here you might not agree with. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I have a good feeling inside of me all the time. You might not think so. You might not like me. But inside of me, I know God likes me because I like myself. And God treats me good. He does things for me. Man, I'm telling you, it's impossible. No human power could do the things that he does for me. And this is real truth. And I come here... 
and I didn't even know why I came here. I came here maybe to sit like you're sitting, and after I sat two and a half years, and after I picked everybody apart in a room, after I remembered everybody's mistakes, after I was wet this two and a half years, I said, baloney, there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. I don't care who you are. So this here life that I'm talking about in Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm serious. I have to be serious because my life is serious. But that doesn't mean I don't have fun. That don't mean I can't joke. That doesn't mean I can't see things. And these things I see, they're beautiful. But I must see this first or I won't be able to have any eyesight at all. There's a lot of you here tonight, and most of you here tonight, I know most of you. There's somebody here we should, we should maybe even recognize, like, like Astrid here. She's from, uh, from, uh, Wyoming, up uh, Wyoming, <laughs> Arizona. And we got somebody back there from Washington. And, uh, so let you guys know that maybe, I don't know, is there anybody else here from another state or a long distance place or anything else like that? Anybody at all? Where are you from? New York? Good. We got three of you now. Anybody else? Uh, no, see, you know, the, 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 the important thing about, I believe anyway for me, that this message that I'm talking about is a message of recovery that comes from Alcoholics Anonymous 12 Steps. It's in print. Now, anyone, some of you guys here, you might doubt what I'm saying. You might say that it doesn't say that, or you might think any way you want to think. After the meeting, why don't you ask me, and why don't we get together? And let me show you what I've talked about in print here. And if it's in print here, this is Alcoholics Anonymous. This isn't nothing to do with me. I came here as an alcoholic with alcoholism, damn near died in the hospital because of it. I've lived this many years that I'm talking about, and I only live this way because of only one thing added to my life, a power, a God of my life that furnished the method through the 12 steps, brought me here and gave me this life. What else could I ask for? What else could I go for? Each day that I'm sober here in Alcoholics Anonymous, each day gets better and better. If you don't think so, look at my track record. Check my track record out now. From all of the years now, up till this very moment. And you know what? At the end of this month, I'm going to be 75 years old. And I have a good life, boy, believe me. And I have people in my life that are just unbelievable. There's just no way they could be there. No way. By human power. This is a good life. I hope there's something here tonight that all of you, any of you, can talk about, maybe you could help each other, maybe you could say words even, that somebody else needs to hear, so that th this message will be delivered. Because this is not about failure, this is not about your neighbor, this is not about how badly somebody treated you yesterday, this is all about the life today for each and every one of us. So you want to start off that way, or you got the seven traditions going? Hmm? Ask questions or talk, either one or two. Thank you. You, bet. you know, the, the, what he was talking about, what was your name? Jim. Jim. What Jim is talking about there, you know, is that in the beginning for myself, for two and a half years, I missed the same boat that you're talking about. I hung around AA, and I lived in AA ever since. I have never went away from AA. But I shied away the first two and a half years from the message that's here. And it's already in print. It's already here in print. And it speaks to this. If you don't think so, and read Chapter 5 in this book right here, the big book, the Agnostic, uh, Chapter 4, the Agnostic. And read in there exactly what they're talking about. And read the pages that are in here marked. And like on page 100, it talks in here on page 100. It says, both you and the new man must walk day by day in this path of spiritual progress. If you persist, remarkable things will happen, far greater in God's hands than anything you and I could have planned. 
Follow the dictates of the higher power, and you'll presently live in a new and wonderful world no matter what your present circumstances. All through the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, now that's the big book, page 100, if you want to read it. All through the big book and through the 12 by 12, they're speaking of a power. In step three is a foundation, a foundation. When I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him, understood him is not understanding him. It's understood that there is a power greater than me that can restore me to sanity. I can't restore me to sanity. That's principle. That's having something now that I never had before. You see, there is a way, but the way must be lived. This is the hardest part about this message. This, when is your alcoholism going to get treated? When? Are you going to treat it tomorrow? Are you going to wait till you get home tonight and cause some trouble and then have to make it up to somebody? Is that the when you do it? When do you treat your alcoholism? If you don't live it right now, it can't be treated. You must, now is now. Because when do you live? When do any of us live? When do you live? You live in the now. You've got to live in the now. You can't live ten minutes from here. It just don't happen. can't happen. Because ten minutes from now, you don't even know what's there. But I know it's here right now. And this is important to talk about because of the way the steps are worded. This is worded for an individual recovery. Because we all can't be here collectively, sober collectively, doing this collectively. This is an individual way of life for today's life. The 12 steps. I used to think I had to run through 12 steps. When I'm at the end of the 12 steps, the very end of it, practice principles and all my affairs. Now I got the program recovered. Now I got it. Now isn't that something? I had to go how many years before God could come in my life and give me a good life? Because I have to finish 12 steps. That's not true. Step three says differently. Step three tells me exactly what I need to know. You know, we go and we went on the uh, on the retreat, and we got on our knees. What did we do? We said the third step prayer. God, I offer myself to Thee. Would go with me and do with me as Thou wilt. Relieve me as a bondage of self. Every one of us. Saying the same words for what reason? You didn't say it for me. I didn't say it for you. But I said it for me. And I asked God. And it says voice it. And I voiced it. And I want God in my life. And I don't care what anybody thinks. I still want God in my life. Because if, if God isn't there, how am I going to make it? Make it means how am I going to live? Live by memory? How's your memory? How's your memory? Mine, I wouldn't even want to go in it. There's nothing in there but real, real trouble. So why not have a way of life today, this day, today, according to the will of God? This is what steps are about. How about somebody else? Peter. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peter. I'm an alcoholic. I got here a little bit early this evening and uh, was having a conversation with Richard. We were talking about memory, and, uh, uh, you know, it's like I'm old enough now so I can recall certain buildings or, you know, multi-story buildings being built and also seeing them being torn down uh, with a wrecking ball. And the the thing is with, uh, let's see, what am I trying to get to here, of uh, the memories that I have that are from, uh, the past, in other words, information comes on in, and uh, I'll have a lot of recollections about when I see the wrecking ball come, and I see the old building going down, it takes me back to my remembrance of, gee whiz, you know, I remember when that building was going up, in fact, I might have participated in it, and I was telling Richard there was one building that was kitty corner from my high school, and I was, you know, part of the uh, the welcoming ceremony at that particular building, and um you know, so when I go by that building now, it's like, or that even that site on that corner, my mind goes back to how it was back then. 
And, uh, you know, rather than being present right now for what's happening on that corner right now, in other words, what's there right now. And, uh, you know, what I've begun to find out is that in my mind, um, glass in hand, I warped my mind. And what, what's happening that I'm finding out by writing things down now is that uh, I think uh, in my own mind that something has happened in a certain way. But when I stop and I write it down after the day is over, I find out that something different has happened than what I thought had happened. And I find out that, that my memory is a delusion of what actually did occur in the day that I was in. And that I'm beginning to recognize what the warp is in my mind. In other words, I have a mind that's uh, that's uh, habituated to working in a certain fashion, and it doesn't give me the correct information. And, uh, you know, I've just begun to recognize that so I can see what my problems are. And this has to do with how my relationships are affected with everybody, everything around me. And uh, it's not just, you know, the fact that I, well, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that so everybody will think I'm being cool, but I'm trying to see, you know, where's the discomfort that's inside of me? And that's the thing that I suffer with. And, you know, it's the idea that it's uh, I'm not making anybody else suffer. I may not be making anybody else suffer, but I'm causing myself that suffering. So I have to remember when the information comes on in, it's like, what do I do with that, with that information? If I process it like I used to, uh, the thought comes on in and uh, I'll end up starting to make a judgment, which is what I used to do. But I don't need to make the judgment now because making the judgment has to do with self. Now, if I have God with me or I have, you know, I've made that decision to turn my will and my life, my moment, over the care of God right now, I don't have to go to self. I don't have to make the judgment so I can be free of it. And uh, this is just something that I, I realized this afternoon and uh, in doing some you know, reading and contemplating and, and also keeping a record of what my thoughts are, uh, you know, on a daily basis and, you know, for the last 10 days or so, I'm beginning to put them together and starting to see the pattern and say, no, I'm starting to recognize what's going on here. I'm starting to see the warp in my mind and I'm starting to realize how that can be changed around to something else that how the solution is available. And, uh, you know, it's in the method. And uh, and in that power that is greater than me. Thanks. Yeah. Happy birthday to the birthday people. Um, I have to. I feel like I have to tell on myself as I was sitting there listening. Um, I mean, I've known you for over five years now, and. As you were talking tonight, this light went off that said, you know what, you're really lazy because I've been given all this information and I know what to do when it hits the fan and my ego and my pride and for so many years I was so comfortable wallowing in the pile of crap because I, I, I came from a bad life. I treated myself bad and, and I, you know, I drank and I you know, abused myself and all those things we do before we got here. And sometimes that's sober. I know when I'm having a bad day, I've been around you for a long time and I have the information and I think I would rather sit there and wallow in it and feel sorry for myself than ask for the help. And when you were sitting there talking tonight, I, I, this thing popped into my head of like, you're lazy. You have the information. You know what to do. I've worked this. I live with the tapes. I go on the road. I take the tapes with me. I pass them on to friends. I talk to other people. I bring people to this meeting. I have the information. And, and I'm thinking, in the five years I've known you, I should be further. I, should ha I have a long strings of good days. But when I have bad days and it really hits the fan, sometimes I, I, I sit around and go, you know, I really deserve this. I deserve to feel bad today. And And... I don't ask God for help. I'll, 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 I'll defy him the whole day. And I'll stay with me. And, um, and then I'll go out and get in my car. And then I'll continue it there. And everything we talk about. Then I'll go to the grocery store. And the lady that has 14 items in 10 is Satan. 
you know, and, and I want to kill her. And, it, and, and as I'm talking, all along I'm sitting here thinking it's untreated alcoholism. And it's been pointed out to me on numerous occasions that, you know, and I'm aware of it. I, you've, I, I've, I've been, you know, I, I've been really blessed with a lot of great things and I'm aware of it. And still I will defy it and I will defy God and I will want to do my will once again. And I think what brought it up was right at the beginning when you said, I would rather do something wrong than to do something right that I, you know, that I don't really know and explore that whole territory. And uh, I just felt uncomfortable and had to tell him myself, thanks. And this was um, definitely one of those nights where I wanted to just take Bob and just stop it. Stop telling me. Stop talking about me, please. And when am I going to treat it? And definitely, I was. I will go in my day and just do what I know how to do, you know. I'm just, I'll be comfortable with the discomfort, you know what I mean? And I, I go to work this morning, and, and I have this headset, you know, this receptionist at this doctor's office, and I... I have this headset in my ear, and this girl, no one ever calls me there, but this one girl calls me, so I'm on this personal call, and I, and I hear this voice coming out of my phone, but no one ever really tries to contact me that way, and it's one of the doctors, and she keeps trying to talk to me, but I could barely hear her, and then she says, are you on a personal call? I'm like, no, no, I'm not on a personal call, and I feel awful, I just, ah, oh, I'm such a liar, you know, and this is bothering me, this is really bothering me. And I know what I have to do, you know, and I know that, and I'm still on probation there, and I know I have to go to this woman. And, um, you know, later in the day, I had the opportunity, you know, I'm like, can I talk to you? Can we close the door? And I said, you know, I have to let you know that um, I lied to you, you know, that I was on a personal call, and, um, and how can I make that right here? You know, is there anything I can do to make that right? And she's like, I can't even believe you came back here to tell me that. And she said that I've had so much dishonesty in my life that this is a really beautiful thing that you came back here. And, um, and she told me how she felt, and, and she's, you know, completely correct. And, and I have that head. And this job, we, there's a collective thing that goes on at my job, and it's called We're Going to Get Fired. It's, everybody thinks this there. And, and um, it's, I, it's really amazing to... Ugh. And, um, you know, and I, I'm just really, really grateful I have a God. And, you know, when I came out of the room, I, you know, the, this girl said to me, you know, I can't, I can't believe you really went in there. And I, I had tears on my eyes when I was talking to this doctor, you know, just can't do the same things anymore. Not even a little thing like that. It'll just blow up in my life. And this girl said, God, you're not the tin man. You really have a heart. They think I'm so mean there, I swear. And, um... You know, it's just in all, you know, a couple of weeks ago, someone, um, you know, I'm, I'm really going to be blessed that I could speak at this meeting, this really big meeting, another fellowship, and um, and I'm, I haven't been present since then. I have, I've been speaking at that meeting in my car in, at 12 o'clock at night. I'm a great speaker one night. One night I'm not a great speaker, and, and I'm in hell, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even here. I'm not even here. I have my friend Darren. He's going to meet somebody soon. Uh, you know, then we're not going to be friends. It, it's hell. This is hell for me. And um, and and I I got to go. You know, I can't be friends with this guy. I got to go now. Get ready and pack. You know, pack my little life and go. And um, let him be free because I'm you know so altruistic. Um, and. I, I can get a healing right now, you know, I can get a healing right now, and I never understood that. I'm so rigid that if I was pissed yesterday, then I better be pissed today, just because I, I was pissed yesterday. And um, I'm blessed, you know, I'm really blessed to be here. I, I'm thanking God right now to give me an open mind to hear everything that I heard tonight, because that's farther than I would ever come before. So thank you for my life. Thank you. Anybody else? Michael. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm an alcoholic. Hi. Um, you know, it's like uh, in those. Uh, I'm. What keeps coming up for me is like you know, there's there's just no excuses. I'm glad you mentioned that thing. You know that we did when we got on our knees because you know once I did that, there's no excuses to go back to self. You know, and. Um, 
And that was something that I heard Bob say, you know, for a long time. You you just, you know, I said, what if, what if I'm with self? How do I get back? It's like, you know, this doesn't happen. Because when you're in the new character, it just doesn't happen, you know. And, um, and if it happens, it's because I want it to happen. So, you know, that, that closes that option. You know, don't, don't even go there. Don't even talk about it, you know. And, um, and that was something, you know, I, I've been around this now for maybe two years and I've heard a lot of stuff and, you know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of information, you know, that's coming my way every day, you know, and, um, and I just, you know, I realize that, um, you know, sometimes uh, I hear something and then the first thing, you know, oh, I've heard that before. And then my mind, you know, wants to go shut. And, you know, now in the new character, this is not okay, you know. It has to stay open because even though I've heard it, you know, um, I just, uh, I haven't heard it, <laughs> basically. A lot of these things I haven't really heard. They haven't sunk in. They haven't, you know, they haven't, I haven't had a spiritual awakening about them yet, you know. But yet I think I know them. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, today again I had this uh, thing about, you know, I don't have to wear faces. I've been hearing that so many times now. And suddenly today, I realized what, again, I really realized what that meant for me. You know, I don't have to um, treat you different than you. You know, that's that's the thing. Um, and, um, and, you know, being in that new character, you know, when, also when... when um, you're talking about the um, steps being in an order form. I cannot have, um, you know, I can't have anything without step two, because um, step, uh, you know, I can't have step three without step two. That makes a lot of sense to me now, because um, if I don't have the open mind, you know, this I can, you know, there's no way I can have. Um, you know, I, I can get on my knees and say this prayer with any effect, you know. And a lot of the times, you know, I think um, I am with God, you know, because I, you know, people mention God. Yeah, yeah, I've handed that over. And, and that's where self-honesty, you know, I have to see that I haven't handed it over at all, you know. That it's just something, you know, ever since I came in AA, um, not prime time, but AA, you know, 12 years ago, I accepted that there was a power greater than myself, but I didn't, I didn't um, accept him as a living power in my life, you know, that is supposed to have everything of me, you know, and, and, and I just said, yeah, God will take care of that, but really, deep down, I'm, I'm I'm holding on, and and I'm re I was holding on, and now I'm giving it up, you know, and um, and through self honesty, I can see how much I'm still, you know, I still want to control everything, and because every time I worry about something, it's because I haven't given it up, you know, and I get fears every day, you know, and that's when I realize, you know, um, there's something wrong with me, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. And that's the spiritual axiom you're talking about. Whenever something bothers me, there's something wrong with me. And all this stuff, you know, I have to hear it all over and over again because it just, um, otherwise it's just words, you know. I cannot take this in just in one meeting or, you know, or one meeting with Bob. I just have to hear it and, and I, I really have to pray so that I hear what's being said, you know. Because my mind, you know, it's like, it just, I just want to go out of this room all the time, you know, when, when, uh, it's just, you know, but there's no excuse to do it. You know, every time I do it, I know that I, I chose to do this. Before, I thought, well, you know, my mind just keeps going off. 
but it doesn't. I, I choose to do this. And what, you know, when you said before, the, um, the mind is, um, is the soul, you know, so that really sunk in because, you know, I gotta open my soul to let God in, you know, and because you were saying, you know, the mind is not here, it's here, you know, and, and for a long time I thought I gotta let God in my head. You know, and that, uh, and it just doesn't work, and I was getting very frustrated. You know, it's um, so anyway. I'm I'm really I'm really um, grateful to have this message. You know, there's so much to learn and to hear, and I'm really happy that Astrid came. You know, because I've been giving her tapes, and and um, and I'm glad that you made it to a meeting. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You know, all of the talking that that I do, anyway, uh, uh, speaking of the program recovery and the 12 steps and all that, and it seems like I stay in step one, two, and three. And uh, it, it's when I listen to the tapes, even for myself, my own tapes, you know, to see what's been said on them, because I, you know, I don't really know what's been said all the way through there either. But uh, what uh, Frank was talking about there is the fact that you know, there's an application here in Alcoholics Anonymous, and the message that I'm talking about isn't step one, two, and three only. And and I had to learn for myself a great many things, you know, because at the time, this is a long time ago, is that nobody talks about it, and it's not read. It's not shown at all. And what it is is about an application living a different way, living a different life in the day I'm in, only because of what's there to live. That would mean that this here way of life that I'm talking about is a combination of the power and also the 12 steps, but in, in an application form. So maybe maybe some of these, uh, this meeting here maybe, and maybe other meetings, uh, maybe there's something puzzling you. I don't know. It, with me, a long time ago, there was a lot puzzling me. And what it had to do with, generally, most generally, was is the words themselves of the step application of what they say, I could read the words, and I even read the chapter in the 12 by 12, because it's all in 12 by 12. But I couldn't live it. I couldn't do it, and I didn't know what it meant. And so if there's somebody here even that wants to know, maybe maybe nothing will be said here tonight uh, along any certain step that bothers you, that you don't know about or you want to know about or anything else like that, this would be a real prime time to find out yourself. Get up here and ask, or get up here and talk about it, if you know it, or whatever it is. Whether it's any step, I don't care which one of the twelve, it doesn't make no difference. Because they all are a way of life. They all are a way of living today, this day, by principle. By principle. So that means exactly what I say it means. But when I stay in one, two, and three, sometimes maybe some of you think that the solution is only in one, two, and three. And it's not. The character building is 12 steps. And the character building that I'm talking about is today. This day. Today. Now. This isn't for something in the future. It's not for something coming from the past. It's always about today. This day, today. I know for myself that these steps that I talk about, and I know are here. They're right in print. Every one of them are. That I didn't know the purpose of why there's 12 of them and why they follow in order form they follow in. I couldn't figure that one out. And yet, though, they're there for one reason, one reason only, to build a new character from step 1 to 12. Not building a new character cafeteria style. Anytime you feel like working one or feeling like you do one or two or three or whatever it is. But it's changing a character that I brought here, changing. I cannot be me. I can't be me. I'm an alcoholic with alcoholism. It's a growing disease. It's a living disease. It's called ism. It never goes away. When I die, it'll go away. So why do I have to suffer for that reason? Because it's in me. I don't have to. There's a program recovery here that says... I can have exactly today what I need for my life today, but it's got to go through a power greater than any human power. And it was already read here tonight. said probably no human power could relieve my alcoholism. God couldn't would if he ever saw it. 
That's exactly what I'm talking about now. This is serious stuff I'm talking about. This is a this is a life and death proposition. This isn't spending an hour and a half to be entertained. This isn't a social function. This is a way of life that I need for my life because my life is going on right now and it's going to stay that way as far as the alcoholism is concerned. If it's not treated, it'll control me. And it won't go away until I die. So why not have all of this, what I'm talking about, or talk about it yourself, or even look at it? Why not? That's what it's here for, for each one of us. Anybody want to get up here? Yeah. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm an alcoholic. I got a question for you, Bob. I can't, well, actually a statement. Can you talk about uh, step nine in the application? Thank you. <laughs> There's a reason for that. You know, uh, <clears throat> step eight and nine, to my way of thinking, see, in application, living, changing, being the new character, I don't believe eight and nine is such a difficult way of learning how to live by the step application by principle. I don't think so. Now, somebody else might think that so. But step nine, you know, step eight says, I made a list of all people I've harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Step nine says, I made direct amends to such people wherever possible, wherever possible now. Remember that word. Except when I do so, it injures them or others. See? Wherever possible. Now, I had a wife I never did the eighth and ninth step with. She died. She lay in the cemetery up at Oakwood. And I never made I never made the amends to her. I made them to everybody else. I even went back to Cleveland, Ohio. I made them to my father, mother, sister. I made them to everybody. But I never made them to her. You see, step nine. I believe the major part about step nine would be coming from eight. Because what it says in eight. I made a list of all persons I've harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Now, in the first place, I had to learn that this is not something I do, and after I do it, it's a done deal. It's over with. Finished. It's gone by. Ended. That's the end of it. It's not. These are principles to live in the day I'm in. Eight and nine are there to help me clear away the wreckage of my past. But they're also there so that I can live in today so I don't build another past that has to be cleared away. This is a way of life by principle what they're talking about in the ninth step now. The hardest thing, I believe, in the ninth step would be to know why the eighth step says what it says. Because I never knew what harm means to others. Just exactly. Do you know what does harm mean to others? Does that mean when you were drunk, when you were out there in the world drinking, doing anything you want to do, and then you come to Alcoholics Anonymous, and then you straighten that out, and that's the end of that? That doesn't mean that. That's part of what has to be done, sure. Because I do have to clear away the records of my past. I do have to make amends. I do have to maybe pay people back that I stole money from and stuff like that. Or I beat my dad up one time and I had to go back and talk to him about that. And things like that. But see, these here steps are principles to live in the day I'm in. Now. This time. Now. Right now. This step here, these steps here, 12 steps, aren't to clear away the records of my past, my drunken past, <clears throat> and after my drunken past has gone by, I can be here free and act and do as I please. No, that, that wouldn't work because I'm still capable of hurting somebody right now. The harm that I can put out right now, I'm, I can do it. I know how to do it. I know all about it. But you see in here, it talks in here, in this book here, in, this, in the 12 by 12, and I had to find out exactly what harms are. Now, I know what harm is because I've been out in that world out there, and it's a tough world, and I lived in a tough world. And I know what it is to steal and fight and hurt, and you put people in the hospital, get put in the hospital, and get your jaw broke both times, both sides. I know all about stuff like that. But they're not talking about that. They're talking about different kind of harms, harms that I never knew that goes with today's living. And the past. This would come out of step eight. 
It talks in here about harms on one side, and this is on page 80, and then on 81 it says this, Such gross misbehavior is not by any means a full catalog of harms we do. Let us think of some of the subtler ones, which we sometimes can be quite as damaging. Suppose that in our family lives we happen to be miserly, irresponsible, callous, or cold. Suppose that we are irritable, critical, impatient, and humorless. Suppose we lavish attention upon one member of the family and neglect the others. What happens when we try to dominate the whole family, either by rule of iron or by constant outpouring of minute directions, for just how long how their lives should be lived from hour to hour? What happens when we wallow in depression, self-pity, oozing from every pore, and inflict upon those that are about us? Such a roster of harm done others, the kind that makes daily living with us as practicing alcoholics difficult and unbearable. And it goes on and on. That's today's living. Now, see, it's in step nine. And in step nine, to really have something there, to go to somebody. Like I went to my father. I went to my father and I apologized. I told him I was drunk. I told him I heard him say something I didn't approve of. And I couldn't stop it. And what I did, I'm going to try to make it up to you. And I apologized. And he said, no. He said, I don't want to hear none of that. He says, you just keep going with those people that you're with and that's all I want from you. And I said, listen, I'm not doing this from you. I'm doing this for me. I'm going to tell you how bad it affects me in my life today. How I constantly think of beating you up, hurting you, blackening your eyes, and blood in your nose. You're laid in bed all full of blood. I put you there. I said, I'm apologizing to you because I couldn't do nothing else then but that I was drunk, didn't know any better, but I want to make it up to you. Whether you want to accept that or not is not my business. So that was step nine. And he said he did forgive me. He said it's all right. And I didn't know how to do this, though. But God showed me that I have to do something. Because if I'd have left it up to my father, he'd have said no. Forget about it. And then what am I going to do with my mind? What am I going to do with my memories? What am I going to do when I go down the line and think about that that night? I'll, I'll take it right to the cemetery with me. I won't be able to get rid of it. And the purpose of step nine would be exactly what it's there for. To try to make the amends so that I don't hurt other people. I don't take, take advantage of a situation just to make me feel good. If there's a situation that involves other people, sometimes you have to keep your mouth shut. Because if you open it up, you'd hurt them again and again and maybe others. Step nine is, a, is an important step, but I don't think it's so big, and I don't think it's so complicated, and I don't think it's a step that should be overlooked or anything like that, but I don't think it's anything that you and I, as any of us, can't benefit from. And the main thing about this, too, now, is the character I'm building today. I don't have to do that again. I don't have to build that character again. I don't have to make another list again. I don't have to remember things I don't have to. It's not necessary no more. Step nine is like you can go on and on and on. Because you can yourself take a look at your own life, wherever you are. Look at your track record. Look how you treated people. Look how you went ahead and whoever that person was. How you badmouthed them. How you hurt them financially. Maybe you hurt them in his marriage. Maybe you hurt them somewhere. I don't know. But the step is in here to allow each and every one of us to live in the day we're in so it isn't necessary to go out and get drunk because your mind gets so sick and your mind remembers so many things about a behavior, about a thought, about a deed that you did. This is real good stuff. The character building I'm talking about is for today, this day today. If I can't live like this, if I can't build my life today in principles, Coming from the steps, where would I go? What would I do? I'd have to go back to self. And go to self is no more than what I have. What do I have? I have all of my yesterdays. I have my past. My past is my future because I cannot change. That should help a little bit, maybe. I'm seven. I'm an alcoholic.
And um, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, I've listened to your tapes as well, Bob. And uh, I appreciate all that was shared. And I wish that I was sharing on a step. But I just wanted to share about something else, which is that um, I've been to two meetings today because, uh, you know, I woke up this morning to turn on the radio to hear that a friend of mine had killed, had died behind this disease and that the other friend of mine was there and, and, and is in jail now for possession of the drugs that killed the other one. And, um, it's nothing new by any means as anybody that's been around this, just for any of us, it's nothing new, death. It's, it's nothing new to me even in the last few months. But, um, I was just thinking because, uh, my life today thematically has sort of been based around my fear of intimacy and my fear of people. It's really been what I've been working on. And then, you know, I go through my day to day and I'm, you know, picking up the phone to answer qu questions about these friends of mine that to the press and to, to people that the calls are coming into my house. And I, I'm like, no, you know, no, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm fine, I'm cool. Yeah, well, yeah, this is what happens, this is what happens, you know. But I'm not really cool about it. I mean, I'd like to say that I'm cool about it because I always like to think that I know what's going on. That's a part of my makeup. I, I know, I'm, I know, I know, I know how I feel, I know why this happens, I know, I get it, I get it. And I don't get it, I don't get it. Every time somebody dies, I don't get it. And I just wanted to share that because I don't, you know, it really scares me that I get to think about that it is to hide in my past and I like to hang out there and I, I go, you know, I go, mm, remember this, remember that. And then it's like, suddenly it's like, oh, ugh, remember that, but he's dead. And then it, it just, I don't understand it. I don't understand life and death. And I just sort of wanted to say that I, I don't. I'm not at peace with that notion. And that's it. Yo. Did you put your name on that list? Which list? You, oh, Steph Knight. Did you put your name on that list? No, I think, I think you asked me that before. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, it, I think so. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Lloyd, and I'm an alcoholic. I am Lloyd. I'd like to give praise to my higher power and uh, and express how truly grateful I am uh, being uh, here in the meeting of Alcoholic Anonymous. And uh, you know, I'm 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 new in this uh, uh, this program uh, about recovery. And what's really new for me is that I'm understanding or beginning to understand uh, this message. You know, but it's only um, the understanding that I'm having about this message is, is because of Bob, you know, and uh, that I'm truly grateful for. And being uh, or knowing about Alcoholic Anonymous since 87, it wasn't until recently, uh, as a matter of fact, February, that I uh, didn't know that uh, when I first came to Alcoholic Anonymous that uh, I was not hearing the message. Uh, but, you know, it's truly been a great adventure for me. Uh, and although uh, I'm, I'm uh, feeling or having feelings about who self is, you know, uh, through recognizing the character that, you know, uh, I am, you know, by coming here, um, for the most part, I feel real good, or I have, you know, good days. But, uh, you know, I think uh, Frank was saying there's just so much, you know, to, to, to grasp here and so much to comprehend that sometimes I find myself, you know, uh, thinking, you know, I'm, I'm doing God's will and, and it's all about self, you know. 
And uh, for me, you know, for the most part, like I say, you know, I, I feel real good about this process. But but I'm wanting to, I guess, uh, I have this feeling of want to rush into getting a total recovery. But like Bob said, it ain't going to happen, you know. Alcoholism is you know, not a wuzzle. You know, you can never get rid of it. And uh, it's just hard dealing with that, you know. Because I figured when I came here, you know, you people could could cure me, you know. And then this man, Bob, tells me you can't. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I just had to get up here and share right now. And, and just let you guys know that it's okay today for me, you know. And uh, although it's been a roller coaster, you know, for the most part, uh, it, it's been on, on, on level ground. And I don't care all the time to uh, to realize that, uh, you know, it's me that's doing the harm to me. But I guess I have to if I want to live. And uh, today I do want to live. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you. Couple, couple minutes. Is it the end? Hi, I'm Richard. I'm an alcoholic. And uh, sitting there hearing everybody share, are, uh, for me, it's a very personal, like each, each one of us, a very personal experience. Because I don't think that any one of us can define their relationship with the power. It's something that's experience, experiential for you. And uh, it, 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 it baffles me and excites me at the same time because for me, over a period of time, it's like a jigsaw puzzle and the pieces start coming together more and more. And a way in which I was taught quite a while ago was to the awareness of the awakening of consciousness is really important for me. It's almost an abstract thing. It's simple in the reading, but in the awakening of the consciousness, it's a very personal experience. When you talked early on about being the same man for two and a half years in, in AA, um, I spent a long time uh, unaware of this particular process and genuinely wanting to not remain in that life that I was in for a long time. And I get excited thinking about the potential of where, how much more, how further I can go. Often you've explained, you know, go for more, go for the thunder, go for more. In the process, because for me there was exactly that, either there was the words in the book, or by the way, I've always, as a child, I've always had some fundamental faith in something. I don't know what it was, even though I got lost for <laughs> many years in intellectualism and everything else. But uh, I don't know, I just had a feeling that I wanted to express that. Uh, you talked about that when you, when, when you mentioned that I'm here for myself. I know exactly what you mean by that. It sounds like a selfish statement, but it's not. And even though it says in our book that we have a way out in which we can all agree upon in brotherly and harmonious action, we all do come from different walks of life. And, uh, and I was reflecting back in the world in which I continue, by the way, I'm still in, with performing artists and a lot of people that are in that world. And uh, I was watching something recently on television where I look back and <laughs> saw the old Chelsea Hotel in New York where I spent many a night. And uh, it's been a long road. But for me, the awareness of the consciousness of God in my life, for my life, is becoming more and more profound. It's becoming deeper. And the more I have to hear it, as somebody said over and over and over again, it just awakens my consciousness more. And uh, and, I, and I'm grateful for, uh, for 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 awakening to that. For so many years, I, I wasn't you know aware of it, even though I thought I was. It's a it's a it's a feel thing, and uh, I just wanted to get up and share that. You know. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.